G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Thursday is upon us and we're sort of just traveling sideways uh, for Bitcoin. The overall market cap's down a little bit, not too much, still sitting around that kind of, you know, $366 billion mark. Gas fees have jumped up a little bit, so we're getting back towards that 100. That's a bit concerning, but look, it's still a lot lower than it was. It was up around the two, 300 gas price for a while there, so way down on that. Dominance still sitting around that 50%. 57% mark and I don't think that's going to change in the sort of not too distant future anyway but once Bitcoin breaks above 12 and a half thousand and particularly when it goes above 13,800 I think you're going to see this change and it'll be a 60 maybe even 70% dominance uh, to Bitcoin for a while there I think everyone will jump on that Bitcoin train and then again once it starts to level out and finds a bit of a plateau uh, it'll lower and people jump back into altcoins. And that's what they'll do. They'll just keep chopping and changing between the two. But let's see, were there some movers? There were, reserve token, quant. So really reserve tokens done the best. Everything else is kind of low single digits. Uh, Ren, which is good. I got into some Ren uh, on a dip uh, and it's doing quite well. So I'm pretty happy about that. Block stack, it's about time. Uh, Hedera Hashgraph, uh, that's good. I uh, got some quite a while ago. Still down uh, on both of these though, but it's good to see they're making a bit of a move. A bit of a move, sorry. Let's see who's dropped the most. So Uniswap, well, up in, in the last seven days, but down over the last 24 hours. Synthetics Network, again, up in seven days, but down in the last 24 hours. So again, nothing too drastic anyway. All kind of single digit stuff. So trading sideways. We go over and have a look. And there's Bitcoin. Don't need that. Go away. And as I said, I knew there was going to be some red coming. There was just too many green days. So I think we had six green days. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And then we've had some red days. There was always going to be a pullback. You can't have green forever. But so far, the pullback hasn't been too bad at all. We still haven't come down and covered off that $11,000 sort of $100 range yet. We did get very close. Uh, and I'm surprised that that didn't fill it on the CME gap. But we can see it sort of scaling down a little bit here. So again, over the next few days, and particularly coming into the weekend, I think we will probably cover that. I think Bitcoin goes down, covers that CME gap, uh, and we travel sideways for a little bit, something sort of, you know, like this, uh, and then we'll go up to that next leg. And again, I think we get up to the 12,500 fairly quickly, and then once we go through the 12,500, I'm going to say we get to around about 13,800, we reject, come back down and test this 12,500, uh, use it as support, uh, and then we're going to basically rocket through uh, and it won't take us too long to get up to that $20,000 mark. I do see that happening uh, probably in December I think that's just my gut feeling not financial advice I think we will get up to around about there whether we break it or not I don't know but if it doesn't happen in December I definitely see it happening in the early part of next year but I think once the markets are uh, sorry once the presidential race in the US is over and no matter who wins really there's probably going to be you know Everyone's saying that the markets are better off if Trump wins and it's a bit bearish for Biden. But let's say Biden does get in. There'll probably be a pullback in the markets. It won't be a massive one, though, because he's going to just put stimulus in. Either way, the markets are going to go up in the short term. Uh, in the real long term, uh, they will. But, you know, there's talk of another sort of hefty correction at some stage. But I'm still bullish on crypto. And even if the markets do tank, I think crypto will recover quicker and it will recover sort of faster and better uh, as in the price uh, they'll go up significantly so you know I'm putting my money into uh, the crypto markets gold markets uh, silver markets and looking to get uh, into some property as well although I probably don't have enough for property at the moment but that's where I want my money at the moment I just don't trust stocks at the moment they are more artificially inflated at the moment and once the stimulus does sort of stop uh, and gets pulled back, they will drop uh, fairly hard in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. But that's what I'm looking for. And I, yeah, I, I think we're going to test this sort of $20,000 mark in December this year. Time will tell. All right, so some good news here for Algorand. I got into Algorand a while ago. It's doing okay, not doing amazing, but I do like Algorand. So they have now 
invested kind of in themselves. They've got some uh, bonus sort of things going on where if you want to invest in Algorand on their blockchain, they'll give you $15,000 uh, for development and things like that. And then, but it'll also go up to half a million dollars. So you can get up to half a million dollars if you're building a blockchain and you decide to go over to Algorand. Uh, and they're looking at a few different projects and things like that. And so it's all to do with mentorship and things like that. You know, they want people to come across to the Algorand network and they want them to succeed and be good projects. So I think that's great news for Algorand. And again, I've got my bag of Algorand, not a huge bag. I don't have a huge bag of anything. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a rich person, not poor but not rich either. So I think this is great news for Algorand uh, and I look forward to seeing you know, what more comes from Algorand. They have a few little bits and pieces of news here and there and they are building a digital currency for one of the Pacific Islands. I think it was something like the Marshall Islands. That's what, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. They are actually going to build the digital currency uh, for the Marshall Islands and it'll be on the Algorand network. So yeah, interesting, good news for Algorand. Another interesting story, I'm from the Coin Telegraph. This is one of my favourite sites uh, for you know Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news, but it's not the only place. There's some really good ones out there, Bitcoin Potato and things like that. Uh, Forbes has got some Bitcoin.com. So if if you want to find some news, they're good places to go. But five mega exchanges hold 10% of uh, Bitcoin's entire supply. So roughly 10.6 of Bitcoin's uh, circulating supply is currently held on just five centralized exchanges according to data published from chain.info. Uh, More than 1.96 million BTC is currently held between the major exchanges, Coinbase, Huobi, Binance, OKX, and Kraken. Likely owing to its custody services, Coinbase holds by far the most uh, with 944,000 BTC, nearly 945,000 BTC. And that's currently spread across 4.3 million uh, wallet addresses in Coinbase. Huobi, so they got about 323 million. And again, they got about a million different addresses. So a lot of coins are currently being held on the exchanges. And uh, it goes to say that, you know, this is in spite of cryptocurrency's fundam fundamental ethos of decentralization and their mantra of not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Now, I think there's a number of reasons that uh, they are being held on the exchanges. Number one, people just trust the exchanges more now. So even when they do get hacked, they make an effort uh, to sort of pay back their, uh, the people who leave coins on there. Now, not all of them, but the bigger ones do. They've got insurance and things like that. Uh, they're, they're much better in their security these days. And people want some BTC on these exchanges so they can uh, jump in and out of uh, altcoins. So when Bitcoin's pumping, they take their profits from the altcoins, put it into Bitcoin, wait for Bitcoin to stop pumping. And then once it starts to kind of level off, they take the profits from the Bitcoin, put it back into the altcoins. And it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, th this is a method and I don't think it's a bad method, but uh, it, it's a hard method to, to master. So, you know, if that's your kind of thing, just beware. You know, my personal advice, and that's all it is, it's just my personal advice, not professional or uh, financial advice, is if you're going to do that, you know, kind of swing trade and things like that, don't do it with large sums of money. You know, just get a little bit uh, of your money and really you don't even have to read the charts all that much. You can just basically have a look at the charts, uh, the percentage gains and minuses uh, on whatever exchange you're in, you know. Do your research, find out what the coins you think are gonna do well are, and on the days when they're red, buy into them. And then uh, when they go green, you know, if it goes up by 20%, sell 20% of it, put it, or exchange 20% of it, and put it back into Bitcoin. And then do the same, when Bitcoin goes up by 10%, take 10% of that Bitcoin, put it into the altcoins that have dumped, and you can just keep going back and forth. But in saying that, be careful with what exchanges you're doing it on. And when I say only a little bit of money, if you're only doing it with a few dollars, the fees are just gonna chew you up uh, and sort of kill you. So when I say a few dollars, you're still gonna have to, you know, maybe a couple of hundred to maybe even sort of a couple of thousand dollars is where you might do it. And I'm not talking tens of thousands of dollars, that's more experienced traders. And again, I don't personally do this. Uh, 
well, I won't say that I don't ever do it. I don't do it often. I've, I've tried it back in the day uh, and I kind of did all right. But what I found was I was not doing it with enough money and the fees and charges that I was paying for constantly swapping them. Uh, yeah, just got eaten up, uh, you know, ate up a lot of the profits anyway, not all of it, but enough. So I do swing trade a little, but not on that day to day stuff. But if that's something that you're considering, yeah, don't do it with all all your money, you're more likely going to lose investors uh, make the most money. Well, the safest money, I would say, you know, traders, the good traders do really, really well. Uh, but they're far and few between investors uh, it's the safer bet and anyway that's just my personal opinion again it's not financial advice but interesting to see that so much Bitcoin is being held on uh, the exchanges and again that whole mantra of not your keys not your crypto and it's very very true they could just do a shut up shop and take everything but the bigger exchanges you know they're not going to do that they have insurance uh, they can see how much you know money is still to come into this uh, space sphere whatever you want to call it uh, and they're unlikely to do that but beware of the smaller exchanges that don't uh, have the big names and aren't tried and tested and things like that but again not to say that couldn't and wouldn't happen with the bigger ones it's just less likely all right bitcoin has hit an inflection point so bitcoin has been pushed into the limelight in recent weeks by a number of high profile companies investing in the cryptocurrency the Bitcoin price has soared through 2020, climbing over 60% since January. However, the flood of recent groundbreaking announcements has failed to give Bitcoin much of a boost. Uh, I wouldn't say, I, I disagree with that. It, it's got a good boost, but we're not in the thick of it yet. A lot of people just go back to when, you, when we're really in the grips of a bull market, the tiniest little bit of good news and everything just skyrockets you know it goes up really hard but then vice versa when there's some bad news it dumps really hard it gets super volatile uh, when it's really in the thick of a bull run but it just generally pushes up more than it comes down so I disagree with that a little bit but not completely that is true we haven't had big massive pumps yet but again I've said this and I've said this uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again is I think institutional buyers are in the Bitcoin market right now and they are copying the micro strategy uh, purchasing method bit by bit slowly but surely because they don't want to pump the price up too much and yeah institutional buyers are slowly starting to build their positions now not all of them just the smart and again what will be considered early adopters they are doing it it will take us getting past that thirteen thousand eight hundred dollar mark uh, and we will quickly see more institutions get in. And unfortunately, you know, because they're not always that smart, once we go above 20,000, and I think that'll happen pretty fast after we break the $13,800 key level, watch people start to pile in once it gets past 20,000. It's that whole psychology, human mindset and psychology that we only want to buy things when they're pumping. And what you got to remember is when they're pumping, they're generally kind of closer to having a pullback you want to get in before they've pumped not so much while they're pumping but you know sometimes you get lucky you get in and you ride it and you get out before you have any losses but most people unfortunately they'll generally lose that way only the smart ones so very interesting now uh, Bessemer Ventures which uh, counts cloud communications platform Twilio image board Pinterest professional networks LinkedIn and streaming site Twitch, among its previous investments, has said it strongly believes Bitcoin will become a globally accepted asset class and predicted institutional demand for Bitcoin has hit an inflection point. And I completely agree with this. I think it has had an inflection point and a lot of businesses are going to be now looking at Bitcoin and they're still unsure. They haven't really made their mind up. But once we break that $13,800 level, and even more so once we break that $20,000 level, there's going to be a big massive push on Bitcoin uh, and the price is just going to start to rocket up, absolutely rocket up. It'll go very, very fast. We strongly believe Bitcoin will become a globally accepted asset class that institutions will increasingly seek portfolio exposure to given its asymmetrical risk profile, scarcity characteristics and ability to serve as a digital store of value. Bessemer Ventures wrote in a blog post outlining its thesis across the crypto landscape. So I've, 
again, I basically, you know, completely agree with what they're saying. This is going to be an emerging, it is an emerging market that's slowly starting to mature and the space is growing to grow exponentially uh, in the next sort of, I'd say 12 to 18 months. I think the peak cycle for Bitcoin is going to be early 2022. Uh, I think 2021 uh, you know they're stretching out a little bit longer uh, and the price you know it, it's so hard to say I'm confident that a hundred thousand will be uh, passed sometime next year but it's not guaranteed again you know the kind of the cycle low after the corona was around about four thousand so really if you 10 exit from there then that only gets you to around about sort of you know forty thousand. But after the, around the time of the halving, we're at about eight thousand ish, seven thousand. Let's just say eight thousand was the high seven thousands. I'm pretty sure. So let's say eight thousand. If you ten x that, then that only gets you eighty thousand. So you know, there's no guarantees. But I think a hundred thousand will be uh, should happen uh, before the peak cycle, or it might be the peak cycle. But it could definitely push all the way up to you know three four hundred thousand. There's a lot of people talking about that, and I think that will be more so if hyperinflation kicks in that we get up to that kind of three four hundred thousand. And you know if hyperinflation is in play at that time, three hundred four hundred thousand sounds like a lot, but it's only because it's hyperinflation. It means everything else costs basically ten times as much as well. So that three four hundred thousand price won't be worth. Three hundred four, three four hundred thousand. Now it might only be worth, you know, who knows? It's hard to say. But let's say maybe one hundred and fifty thousand uh, compared to today's money. So, interesting times, and we'll have to keep an eye out. And again, you know, I, I have my targets that I'm looking for. That when Bitcoin hits there, uh, I'll start to sell some of it. I'm not going to sell all of my Bitcoin, but I will scale out uh, with some of it uh, and take those profits. And you know. Maybe hold them for the next uh, cycle low, or you know, just invest in other things. Again, maybe property, you know, other cryptos. Maybe some shares uh, will, you know, stocks will, you know, peak my fancy around about then. Or at the moment with USDC or just US dollar, uh, particularly like USDC, you can get a pretty good return on things like BlockFi. And if you're interested in BlockFi, there's a link uh, in my about section down below. Uh, and you'll get a few dollars for joining BlockFi. I think they're doing $275, excuse me, for, uh, free Bitcoin uh, if you join. There's some conditions around it, but $275 is pretty good. And I think you get about 8% for USDC at the moment. So that's definitely something I'll be looking at, taking some of the profits from that uh, and trying to get 8%. Because currently in Australia, the banks are only giving, I think, uh, 0.025 percent or something uh, crazy like that or it's 0.25 uh, percent so it's a quarter of a percent uh, interest is what you can get and a lot of their the banks in, in the uk they're in negative interest rates there's talk that you know america is going to get there uh, and look australia we're so close to that as well so that's what i'll be looking to do but things may change by then and maybe you know things like BlockFi and all the rest of it, they can't offer those kind of returns. And there's Yearn Finance swap coming up that's talking about maybe giving, you know, 20 something percent uh, APY on stable coins and things like that. But I don't know how they could do that and our traditional banks couldn't. But, you know, that, that's another story. We'll have to have a look into that one time. Last but not least though, so Bitcoin miner Marathon agrees to deal that cuts electricity costs by 38% with a US power company. So NASDAQ listed Marathon Patent Group has agreed to a joint venture deal with US independent power producer Bow Wolf Energy to deliver cheap electricity for its Bitcoin mining operations in the country's north. In a statement on Tuesday, Marathon said it will co-locate a Bitcoin mining facility within Bow Wolf's Bighorn Data Hub at its 105 megawatt power station in Hardin, Montana. The company will pay Bow Wolf, which builds and operate electric power plants, 0.028 per kilowatt an hour for the supply of electricity at the facility. That is 38% below Marathon's aggregate electricity cost for mining and data center management, currently at 0.034 kilowatts per hour. So Marathon said uh, reduced power costs will also 
uh, lower its break even cost to mine one Bitcoin from the existing. So currently it's about $7,500, you know, to mine one Bitcoin with some profit in there. And that power price will mean they can do it for 4,600. So, uh, you know, now they're almost nearly tripling their money straight away if they get that up. So that's big news for America uh, and the Marathon Pattern Group as well. Obviously, a lot of the mining uh, is fairly centralized over in China and people are worried about that. So now uh, this will really put America in good stead. But look, as soon as America does this, somewhere in China is gonna do something similar and then somewhere in some other country is gonna do something similar. So, you know, it, it's a good thing in the long run because it will move away from decentralization. We really want all countries to kind of have a somewhat equal share. Well, not a somewhat, we'd love them to have an equal share uh, in the mining uh, and distribution of Bitcoin and all the rest of it. But, you know, there's always going to be one or two powerhouse players, and I think China will be one, America will be another, and who knows, some other, you know, random little country that we don't really know about may just suddenly decide that Bitcoin is where they want to invest heavily in, uh, and they may, you know, make a pretty good mark in the uh, mining sector of Bitcoin. Anyway, that's it from me. We do have the weekend coming up. So again, we'll go back to here. We're currently sitting at that around about that kind of $11,400 level. Uh, over this weekend, I do think we're gonna come and close that uh, CME gap at $11,110. I think that will be closed. Uh, but after that, I see us kind of just trading sideways for a while. Uh, and again, it might only be a few days or it might be a week or two. Again, sort of something like this again, we'll coil a little bit and then the pressure is just gonna build and I think we're gonna come up and we're gonna get to around about sort of 12,400 and I think we'll range between around sort of 12,300, 12,400 to 12,900 for a while uh, and then we'll probably fall back down and to around about that $12,500 level uh, and then we will start to range up and again, cover off this uh, there might be, again, we get up here, retrace, come back to the $12,500 level. And then once we actually push through and sort of stay above this, I think we're gonna quickly cover this gap. And then it is uh, new price discovery and, you know, hold on, buckle yourself in and we'll see exactly where this market's gonna go and what it's gonna do. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train. There were a couple there to be had and I'll see you next time.